Hello, I'm Amy the Amazonian with my first ever unboxing video with box. This is a box of the Corset 2020 packs in the form of a bundle. This is what were previously called fat packs. And as you can see in the front, it's got 10 boosters inside. It also has a die, some land, and alternate art premium foil Chandra's regulator. Cool, in case I ever decide I wanna do some Chandra tribal. It also comes with the box, which you can kind of see that it comes in. It'll become more evident, the box that it came in once we open it up. So let me break the seal and we'll get going. I'm gonna grab a pen over here, just to tear into the plastic with, perfect. I know, ruining the collector's value of my bundle by potentially marking it up with a pen. It really doesn't matter. I need this box though. This is actually one of the main reasons I bought this is because I love the storage boxes that these boosters come with. Throw the plastic off somewhere else. And there's that beautiful box. Ooh, pretty. And what is this? Looks like an RFID tag that came in the box as an anti theft measure and toss that off to the side a little bit of extra storage right here and a piece of paper that says discover a wealth of information it has a rapacious dragon on it telling you that you can look up some more information about the set and the story oh what's this what's got chandra fired up Find out at mtgstory.com. I don't know what has Chandra fired up. Other than, like, her general disappointment at everybody around her. Let me scoot this out of the way. So I can show you guys the inside of this. So you, you already saw the outside while it was wrapped around the box. But if I can go ahead and find the seam and tear it apart. There we go. There's also art on the inside. You can see... Chandra within that planeswalker symbol, what looks like running into a stormy ocean, kind of like Elsa from Frozen in the Frozen 2 trailers. That will not be relevant to most of you, but it's relevant to me. So there's also this little uh, filler box that came on the bottom. This is large enough to store some things in. If you have some cards, let me just grab some. I've just got some basics here. Looks like the cards do not fit in that direction, but they do fit in that direction. So you could consider this to be some extra storage or just some extra cardboard for you to toss out. And here we go. My beautiful, beautiful box. So compared to some of the older fat pack boxes, let me grab one over here. This one's a little more stylish. So this is an Avacyn Restored box that I'm bringing over right here. This doesn't have the nice angled view on it. This M21 is also textured, which is interesting. You can kind of feel it with my nail. Whereas this one, while it has the very pretty art of Avacyn on it, is not as textured. The inner boxes though, they look like they're just about the same. I open this up. Having uh, the angular opening makes it harder to open from any side, but it makes it easier to open in general. Oh, there's my die. Yay, it came with the die. And I want to take out another piece of filler cardboard that just helps this uh, retain its shape without crushing the cards inside. The die is also larger than any of the promo dice I've received so far. So this is the Core 20 Fat Pack die right there. And I'll grab another Fat Pack die. I'm gonna keep calling it a Fat Pack. I know it's a booster box now, but we'll have its die hard. So here's my magical bundle of dice right here. And inside of this magical bundle, I should be able to find, aha, here is a previous sets die for comparison. So these are the spin downs that come with each of these bundles. And look at the size difference here. 
itty bitty baby. Big, big piece of plastic. It feels nice though, and it's got a pretty metallic texture to it. It's definitely themed with the rest of the set being these black and red. It's actually a mottled silver color, which I'm really digging. And now, as promised, we should have 10 packs in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, with a variety of arts on them. We've got Moo, we've got Johnny, we've got Soren. I think those are the only characters depicted on these. We also have two small packs. Oh, there's a like a divider box in here. Oh, that's so nice. It's almost like a deck box. Helps you keep some stuff separated out. There's also a guide, very basic, on how to play, showing Planeswalker loyalty, attacking and blocking, and then what I'm here for, my lands, beautiful lands that will get used as sub-lands in just a bit. These are just regular Core 20 lands. See, they're split out with a bunch of plains, islands, swamps, mountains, forests. Looks like there was four of each in this little bundle here. I'm gonna throw those actually off to the side to never be seen again, because I'm gonna use them as sublands on my channel. And I'm gonna open up the pack that has a Chandra's Regulator in it. So this is in fact an alternate art foil Chandra's Regulator. Oh! And this entire pack of lands is actually foiled out. That is some cool stuff right there. I should have read the back of the box more closely because that's super neat. Also, this, this card has popular magic formats listed on the back of it. What do we got here? Standard, Booster Draft, Commander, and Learn More. Learn More is my personal favorite format. But ooh la la, look at these lands. I'm not gonna, let's get this out of the way. Show you guys the M20 lands. Most of these are lands, I believe that we've already seen in other sets that are not unique to Core 20. So everything in here was just so shiny. These are all foiled out. So that's actually going to just about double the number of foil lands that I have at my disposal because I don't have very many of them. There's something I tend not to hold on to, tend not to pick in drafts, but they're awful pretty. Go ahead and put those, put those away somewhere where I will hopefully not tarnish them too rapidly. Just put them in a stack. I'm gonna crack some packs. I've got 10 packs here, and there's a lot of interesting cards in this set, which I'm hoping to find. So I ended up just putting the lands back into the now nested boxes. So I've got the uh, the lid, the box, and then this sub box inside. And I'm gonna keep the die over here, just off camera so nobody can find it ever again. I'm gonna crack open this beautiful, uh, beautiful picture of Soren. Yeah, I'm going to do a lovely job opening this up. You can even maintain the glue if we open it nice and nice and easy. Look at that. If you wanted to, you could seal that up and build your own fun packs with it. It's a nice empty pack for you. Of course, we're gonna see the commons on top. These packs have lands in them, both basics and non-basics in every pack. There's our rare, the basic land. Oh, and there was a foil and a token in here. Where I happened to get in this was the bag of holding. Very interesting card. There's a couple cards here which I very much like 
Bag of Holding is a discard-based artifact, which lets you discard cards, draw cards, and then get the cards you discarded back by sacrificing the Bag of Holding. Also, it's a cutesy little D&D &D thing right there. Also got Vampire to Dire Moon, which I think is a draft star, being a one-mana death-touching lifelinker. There's also a one-mana death-toucher in green in this set, a scorpion. And this other f this other card down here, I'm also a big fan of. So this is foil. It's shiny. You can barely tell on camera. But the Silverback Shaman, I love for drafting. This is a 5-mana five 5-4 five with Trample. And when it dies, you draw a card. That is a lot of value in one card. There's other just staple draft picks here. Pacifism is great. The Sky Knight Vanguard will provide a threat in the air if you don't have a way to deal with it. It is only a 1-2 flyer, but every time it attacks, you get a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature that's also attacking. Bone Splinters is a great way to sacrifice your own creatures and kill your opponent's creatures. Agonizing Siphon kills most things in the set, but I wouldn't kill a Silverback Shaman. And Anticipate and Blade Brand are two just ways to get a better card into your hand than the one you currently have. Overcome works great as a finisher. If you have a semi-wide board, like if you're running tokens or elementals, Overcome can give you the finishing swing because it gives all your creatures plus two plus two and trample until end of turn. It's a lot of damage. So I'm going to be sorting these cards out into some small piles. So I'm gonna put foils, tokens, and I bet people will get mad at me if I don't Wooberg this. I'm just gonna be taking the lands and just immediately putting them into my subland box over here. So let's 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 Wooberg over here. You might not be able to see all the cards once they get sorted out. So we've got the Woob, the Ur, and the G. There we go. Wooberg. And I won't be going through every card in every pack. And I'll put this bag of holding being a artifact. And I'll be putting the multicolors over here. Very nice. And this much detail I won't be able to go through every pack. But it's still fun to do it for a few of them. You get to see the general gist of what I'm opening up. Pack is sticky. There we go. This one ended up getting just ripped open. Ooh, popular magic formats again. What do we have? We've got the Moment of Heroism. I can scoot this up here. That way people can actually see the white cards I'm taking out of the pack. Vampire to Dire Moon and these, these cards here are also getting hit by glare. And my camera is also focusing quite a lot. This, these are lessons to learn. For me unboxing. I'm gonna move these all over here so they're picking up a little bit less of the camera glare where it's important. Very nice. Barony Vampire. Italian Foot Soldier. Tectonic Rift. Shauna's Outrage, actually one of my favorite cards in all of Magic. Petropolis Sprite, great and blue white flyers. Plummet, worth the main decking, and a lot of limited in this set, especially in best of one. Turns out this set has a lot of flyers in it, having blue-white flyers is a major theme. Grilled Sea Serpent, Nest Caster Spider, more anti-air tech in green. Ripscale Predator, one of those very large creatures. Diviner's Lockbox, so I can put that over here with our artifact friend. Herald of the Sun. Thrashing Brontodon, a solid value card there. And Brought Back is the rare in this pack. You know, I've been trying to figure out something to do with Brought Back. This card's very good, but I haven't been able to get it to work. It's two white mana, it's instant speed, and you choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn, and you return them to the battlefield tapped. And that seems awesome. It's a resurrection spell, it's instant speed, but I have yet to get it to work. And of course there was a planes and a zombie token in here. Planes will go off into my box. Box of lands. 
pack number three. Ooh, that's a nice staple card right there. Disenchant. You might have noticed we've got already a couple of a couple artifacts worth this drawing. Haven't seen too many enchantments yet, but they definitely exist in this set. There's also some equipment in this set that's worth destroying, as well as Pacify, which we did see already, and a blue enchantment whose name I'm forgetting right now. I'm sure we'll see one that is worth getting rid of. Fathomfleet Cutthroat, a pirate reprint from Ixalan. Very nice. Even though it's a 4 mana 3-3, three, three, it can potentially just end a battle by taking out a big blocker. Inspired Charge, buffing the board. Same as this guy. Less foil, though. Lava Can Prowler. Very fun in both a, an elemental tribal deck and also just red and another color. It's a 2-4 on its own. 3-4 when it attacks, and if you have any other elementals out, it gets big and scary. Clouds Can Seer, another good card. Another elemental. Huge theme in this set. The Pupper Prismite. It's fixing. Says so Scorpion, hey, that's that other little death toucher I mentioned before. Bloodthirsty Aerialist, this is a flying Johnny's Pride Mate. Very neato. Master Splicer, ooh, so this is a reprint that I love. Master Splicer is a 1-1 one, one for four mana. Boring. Interesting. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 3-3 three, three Golem. And so long as the Master Splicer is on the battlefield, your Golems get plus one, plus one. That's really great, especially because this is not the only golem in the set. Also, this is a golem. There's also an instant speed. Makes two golems. That's a masterful replication that's in this set. A couple others. Spectral Sailor. A lot of people have been seeing this getting played in standard in Simic Flash decks and in mono blue. This is a one mana, one one flyer with flash, so it can be played at any time. And also has an additional draw card ability for only four mana. Definitely a useful card in and out of drafting. And it looks like the rare here is a Mystic Forge. Nice, this is cool in an artifact deck. Not too useful in just standard um, play, but you can build around this. Uh, this is very, very fun with things like Steel Overseer, uh, Ugin. It actually works for both artifacts and colorless non-land cards. Um, it, it, it's very fun. It's very fun. Put that over here. Put that in a colorless commander deck for sure, or a uh, artifact equipment based deck. Bloodfell Cave, so that's a fresh land. This one is a two color land, so I'm not gonna be using that for sublands. And, <gasps> oh, I have a second rare and it's foil. This is a Shifting Ceratops. How exciting. Shifting Ceratops is an uncounterable dinosaur. Yeah, that means good luck with blue. It also is a 5-4 four for four mana that can be given reach, trample, haste for just one mana. It's, it's great, one green mana. Also, it has protection from blue. So things like the Spectral Sailor can't block it or deal damage to it. This is immune to Teferi's, and I love it very much. I'm going to put this off to the side somewhere special because this is a card worth noting. And also a pupper token. Hello, pupper. Open it up the next Pacarino. What do we got? Do 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 do. Angelic Gift. There's an enchantment and it gives flying. Befuddle. Undead Servant. This is a card that gets better the more of them you have in your deck. And if you are drafting, you can sometimes hit four or five of them. It's very fun. Dawning Angel. Can save you from the brink of death. It's a 3-2 flyer, but it gains four life when it enters the battlefield. Sage's Road Denizen, another anti-air in green, the Mammoth Spider. And now a, uh, this is, this is great, this goblin, the bird grabber, can get flying if you have a flyer and you pay to give it flying, because it's actually jumping up and grabbing onto your bird's talon. I love the flavor of that. 
Fleet Paralysis. Ah, oh, there is the enchantment I was thinking of before. This is a blue enchantment that taps a creature and keeps it tapped. Very much worth getting rid of with a disenchant. Boneclad Necromancer. Potentially two zombies for one creature card. Goblin Smuggler. Haste and can make things unblockable. Meteor Golem. A reprint. A very nice reprint. It might be seven mana, but it's very flexible because it can be played in any color. Also, it's a golem. Remember I was talking there were a bunch of golem this, golems in this set? This is one of them. When it enters the battlefield, you can destroy target non-land that an opponent controls. Non-land permanent. Any non-land permanent. Enchantment? Destroy it. Spider? Destroy it. Shifting Ceratops? Sure, why not? This isn't blue. It doesn't get protection from this. Uncaged Fury. This is not a spell you should sleep on. This this spell can catch you by surprise. It is a three mana instant combat trick that can give plus one, plus one, and double strike until end of turn. Yeah, you put that on a bunch of damage that's going through, and suddenly you've got more than double that damage. Slightly horrifying. Veil of Summer. Not a main board card, but very much a sideboard card. This is another anti-blue card. Shifting Ceratops, Veil of Summer, best friends. But this thing also stops a Thought Erasure. Veil of Summer, you draw a card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered this turn. So, I don't know, say your opponent has just tried to counter your spell. You play this in response, suddenly your spells can't be countered. Also, you and permanents you control get hexproof from black and blue until end of turn. Very nice effects, a lot going on on one card. Definitely good at stopping blue and black decks from taking out your board. Oh, and here's the rare from this. A Voracious Hydra. Nice, a Voracious Hydra is another very flexible card because you pay two green and X for its cost. It's an O1 on its own, but each of those X you pay gives it a plus one, plus one counter. And then when it enters the battlefield, it either gets double those plus one, plus one counters, or it fights. So it's removal in green, or it's just a huge stompy thing in green that has trample, and it can be massive if you have a way to generate a lot of mana. Another two-colored land, and a demon token. That's from the altar, which we might end up opening. And open up another pack. Just about halfway done when we're finished with this pack. Another anticipate for the pile. Sorcerer of the Fang. Two mana, one three. Not too interesting, but it can drain your opponent for two life for the high cost of six mana and tapping. Orland Inquisitor, Feral Invocation. This is an interesting card. It's an instant speed enchantment. It's got flash. Murder. It's a common now. It's awesome. This is just destroy any creature. It's great. G good card. Good card. 10 out of 10 would play again. Stone Golem. <gasps> it's another Golem. This is actually a very boring card. It's a 5 mana 4 4 artifact. It exists. Force Claw. Another elemental. A huge elemental. It is a 7 7 for 6 mana in green at common rarity, so you're likely to run into those. And a fun card in red, Shock. It actually seems to kill most of the creatures in this set. Moat Piranha. Well, that doesn't die to Shock. A 3 3. Defender for two mana in blue. Seems like a strange card. It's very large for having Defender. I've also got the Griffin Protector, a bird that gets bigger when you play more creatures that turn. Scuttlemutt, not a golem. Yes, a scarecrow. My cards are spinning all over the place. You can already see the eagle. Oh no. Scuttlemutt. It ramps. It fixes. It's awesome. It's also a three mana, two, two. Scarecrow. And it can change the color of creatures, which is really neat because you can use the Scuttlemutt to, say, change the color of your opponent's attacker to be blue if you have a creature with protection from blue, like the Shifting Ceratops. Suddenly, that creature is not doing any damage to your Ceratops. Very neat card. Imperian Eagle. This is a 
absolute, absolutely amazing card, especially in draft. It's a 2-3 flyer for three. Awesome. Also gives other flyers plus one plus one. It is an anthem for birds, and it's also a bird spirit, so you can put it into bird tribal or spirit tribal. It's just our second multicolored card to put over here. Aether Gust. This is a color hate card. Similar to the Veil of Summer I showed before. But it hates red and green. It doesn't counter things, it just puts things on the top or bottom of a library. And the rare is Golos! Hello, Golos! Golos is a five color card, but not as casting cost. It only costs five colorless. When it enters the battlefield, you get a land, any land out of your library, put it into play tapped. And if you pay seven mana, one of each color, plus two colorless, then you reveal the top three cards from your deck and exile them, and then you can play them until end of turn for free. It's amazing. It doesn't change the speed of those cards, so if you hit things that aren't instants, you can't cast them on your opponent's turn, but it's still really, really good. This is a super cool card. Actually, I will bring this one out separately so people can remember how amazing Golos is. Another one of those two color lands. Gains you a life when it enters the battlefield. And this very pretty elemental token art that takes up the whole thing because it has no additional text on it. It's just a 1-1 one, one elemental, and it's beautiful. Straighten up my piles. Thank you, piles. And open up pack number six. I love opening packs. Befuddle! Befuddle is a great little cantrip, very nifty, which didn't cost three mana, but it's worth it sometimes. Another Barony Vampire, Soul Mender, very old reprint there. Don't even remember the first time that got printed. On Summon, another great reprint. Also a very constructed playable card, because it's one mana to unsummon something, it puts a creature back into its owner's hand. You can use that to save your own creature or to unsummon your opponent's creature. Great way to interrupt them if, say, they have a 7-7 seven, seven attacking you, a Vorse Claw attacking you, you don't have any blockers, you unsummon it to their hand, and next time it comes out, it has summoning sickness. Greenwood Sentinel, Marauder's Axe, Thicket Crasher. This thing gives all of the elementals on your side of the battlefield trample. Oh, it has trample itself as well. Destructive Digger. This is a nice way to convert your extra artifacts and lands into cards. It also destroys artifacts, which is interesting. There's a wand in this set that when it is destroyed, you get to deal five damage to somebody. Combo nicely. Convolute, a counter spell. Season of Growth. Ooh, so this is a card which is great in limited and constructed if you are running a combat trick heavy deck like Feather. This is the reason why I tried to make a Naya Feather deck, and I've had great success with it so far. Season of Growth is a card draw and scry engine. Thought Distortion, an uncounterable show me what you got in your hand card. What you got in your hand? Everything. Wolf Rider Saddle. Makes things only blockable by one creature. Also comes with a free dog. I like free dogs. I could put that over with the artifact, but it's a colored artifact, so I'll put it here. And this is my first mythic rare in all these packs. The Cavalier of Dawn. Hello, Cavalier of Dawn. Cavalier of Dawn is one of the elemental knights, these cavaliers. Five mana, three in one color. It's one of the more lackluster ones, though. The White Cavalier is not my favorite at a bunch. But guess what it does? It makes a golem. It's a 4-6 with Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield, you can destroy up to one target non-land permanent, and its controller creates a 3-3 colorless golem. Cool. Neat. And when it dies, you return target artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Not too powerful. Still a good card. And I'll put this over here because it's my first mythic. Hooray! And oh, we got a second rare in here. 
Also got an island. But look at that, it's a foil scheming symmetry. This is a card which is ridiculous in Two-Headed Giant. Also look at that crazy foiling. Because you choose two target players, usually yourself. And each of those two players gets to search your library for a card, tutor for it, and put it on top of their deck. Neat. Especially if you have a way to shuffle an opponent's library, if you use this in just a two-player match. Or if you have a way to draw the card that you put on top right away. So I'll put that over here as a foil rare, fancy pantsy. Another elemental token. Is this pack six? I wasn't counting right. That last one was pack five, wasn't it? Nope, this is pack seven. Okay, I'm not crazy. Blood burglar. Hello, blood burglar. Another vampire has lifelink when it's attacking. Moment of heroism. That's a spell that gives lifelink for a turn. Another befuddle. Greenwood sentinel. Frilled Sea Serpent, Sedge Scorpion, Lavakin Brawler, hello there, friend. Unsummon again, very nice. Trying to not reveal these cards. I feel like there are a lot of foils in these, in these packs. I heard somewhere that they upped the number of foils in Corset 20, 2020, but I don't know for sure. Netcaster Spider. Rule of law. This is a uh, very rude way to interrupt and slow down a match by forcing each player to only cast one spell per turn. Especially rude if you have something like Teferi or Narset on the board. Primeborn Cutthroat. A little flashy friend who gets bigger when you play spells on your opponent's turn. The Mask of Immolation. Ooh, now that is an interesting card. Mask of Immolation is a two mana that comes attached to a 1 1 elemental, like this one. And you can sacrifice the creature that has the mask equipped to it to deal one damage to any target. It's a sack outlet. It's very neat. Cost two to equip. Legion's End was my rare in this pack. Legion's End exiling a small creature. It's a creature of CMC 2 or less. And then it exiles all other creatures on your opponent's side of the battlefield with that name. Then it reveals your opponent's hand and also exiles all cards with that name. And exiles those cards from their graveyard. This is a very hateful card against weenies. Got this Windscarred Crag. Ooh, a foil flashing, thrashing Brontodon. Very nice. Just put that over here with the Silverback Shaman. And this wolf. Hello, picture of Vivian being revealed as I strip open this pack. Let's take that token out right now. Feral Invocation. So far, my pile of green cards is much, much thicker than any of the other piles over here. And that doesn't even include for these, uh, these foils. Or this foil. Soul Salvage. Bringing creatures back from the graveyard. Raise the Alarm. Instant Speed Tokens. A great reprint. Or Anticipates. Leather Stone Golem. Vorst Claw. Shock, Moat Piranha, more Protectors, more Scuttlemutt. I love you, Scuttlemutt. I need to put that Scuttlemutt and many other Scuttlemutts into my commander deck. Season of Growth. Ooh, here's one of the multicolored uncommons in this set. Lightning Stormkin. This is kind of like Sky Knight Legionnaire, only in is it colors, costs one less. It's a 2-2 flyer with haste. And here's my rare for the pack. Dragoseth, Maw of Flames. Terrifying card. Absolutely terrifying. It is a 7 mana, 7-7 seven, seven flyer that when it attacks, it deals 4 damage to any target, and then 3 damage to up to 2 other targets. Yikes. I mean, it's amazing. I love this card. I've seen it in a lot of reanimator decks because it's just such a good target to bring back with haste. Island. 
And, ooh, here's a fun little card. This is the Iron Root Warlord, another one of these two color, multicolored cards. This one is foil, though. And it works great with tokens. It can also make tokens. It's also a three mana, one five on its own. Its power is equal to the number of creatures you control, including itself. Costs five mana to use its ability to create a white soldier token. Expensive, but still great. Put those with the foils. Get up to pack nine over here. Only one more left after this. Let's see what we got. Daybreak Chaplain! Sup, girl? A life linker right there. Heart Piercer Bow. Okay, so this is the first one of these that I've run into so far in these packs. Heart Piercer Bow is a very funny card in draft. Constructed, I don't see it doing too much, but it is a two mana equipped for one. Whenever the equipped creature attacks, the bow, not the creature, deals one damage to a defending creature the, your opponent controls. Might not seem that crazy, but when you notice how many creatures in the set have one toughness or how one damage might force them to trade, it adds up, especially if you get multiple of these bows. It also works nicely with the Cutthroat, Fathom Fleet Cutthroat, and the black red, we did not get one, multicolored uncommon. So I'll put this over with the artifacts. Sorcerer of the Fang. Soul Mender, Greenwood Sentinel, another Axe, another Thicket Crasher, Destructive Digger, whoopsie, Convolute, Murder, more Murder, love the art on this, Grave Digger, well, this is always a solid card, a 4 mana 2-2, two, two, but it enters the battlefield and returns a creature from your graveyard to your hand, very useful in some small graveyard recursion. Chandra Spitfire. A lot of people have been seeing this being played in Cavalcade decks because it gets huge really fast. It's a 1-3 flyer for 3. Not too interesting there, but it is in red. And when an opponent is dealt non-combat damage, like a shock or cavalcade damage, anything like that, it gets plus 3 plus 0 until end of turn. And that ability stacks, so sometimes you have a gigantic 10-3 Chandra Spitfire. Just coming at you. It's also an elemental for that good elemental synergy. Another elemental right here, Yarrux Wave Crasher. When it enters the battlefield, it bounces another creature into its owner's hand. Your a creature you control, sorry, to be specific. It doesn't unsummon your opponent's creatures. It's good for repeating your enter the battlefield effects. And my rare is the Bishop of Wings. Very nice. Good in Angel Tribal. Gains you life when a angel comes into play, and may see a spirit when an angel dies. Evolving wild, some great fixing, and a treasure token, also good fixing. And this is the last pack from my bundle. Also, the reason I have this bundle is because I ended up with some extra game store credit and I realized I could use another box for storage. And now here I am with more cards and a new way to store them. I just wanted to point out the Atemsis token back right here. It's very pretty. Atemsis is a very pretty Sphinx. I'll take that token out. It's a wolf. Let's see what we have here. Mind Rot, Merlin Inquisitor, Feral Abomination, Big Black and Death Touchin, Blood Burglar. It's so hard for me to not say Blood Burglar. And Fairy Miscreant. Love this card. One mana, one one flyer. If you already have a Fairy Miscreant in play when you, when this enters the battlefield, not when you cast it, when this enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Hooray. That's great. Especially if you can get like 20 of them. I don't think you actually want 20 of them, but like four is good. Fly Elf Dragonfire. Rabid Bite. Reduced Ashes. That's some red removal right there. Another Unsummon. Seem to be hitting a lot of those. Vengeful Warchief. Whenever you lose life for the first time each turn, you put a plus one, plus one counter on this boy. So it's a five mana, four, four that gets big quick. 
It only gets one plus one plus one counter maximum per turn, but they can be put on you either during your turn or your opponent's turn, say if you shock in a land, or if you have something that deals damage to you. Eternal Isolation, some white removal for large creatures. Portal of Sanctuary, this is a, another way to repeat your enter to battlefields by bouncing creatures back into your hand. And the rare here is the Icon of Ancestry. This is a tribal enabler for any tribe. You name your creature type, and that creature type gets plus one, plus one. Very good. It also has a way to search your deck by looking at the top three cards and putting a card of that creature type you named into your hand if you happen to encounter one. And a swamp. And here's another foil. This one's Infuriate. This is just a very nasty little trick. A one mana target creature gets plus three plus two. This this just seems like so much. It's almost a giant growth in red. Almost. Very close. And those are all of the cards from my from my bundle. Thank you so much for watching me unpack that box. Now we just go ahead and throw everything back in. All willy-nilly, but Amy, you need to sleeve your rares. No, I don't. I'll do that later. I will do that later, especially that shifting ceratops. I'm very excited about playing with that. It's going to go in more than a few decks. Didn't get all the cards I was looking for, though. One of the cards I really wanted from this set and have yet to open here or otherwise is a Leyline and a Void for use in Commander. As well as one of the Risen Reefs for an elemental deck I'm building. I'll end up probably buying those in just a little bit. So this are, these are all the cards I opened minus a few basic lands and the basic lands that came in there. And we can just pop those in behind the foils so you can see how nice they all look together. Look at that. So pretty. I can put the die back in too. Let's get the inner box out, close it up, and we're done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you like this video, because if you did, I can do more unboxings when I end up getting sealed products.